Hi everyone, hope you're having a good day. Um, we are in Jeremiah 32, verses 36 to 44. Um, yeah, let's pray. Lord, we pray that as we give our hearts to you, we spend this time in your word, you would give us, Lord God, an understanding and clarity, and give us, O oh Lord God, an open heart. Help us, O oh God, to be convicted that it would lead us, O oh Lord God, to live in response to your word, to see your hand of mercy and your hand of justice. And it would lead us, Lord God, to fully grasp who you are and to follow after you, Lord. We thank you, God. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So Jeremiah 32, verses 36 to 44, you are saying about this city, by the sword, famine, and plague, it will be given into the hands of the king of Babylon. But this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. I will surely gather them from all the lands where I banish them into my, in my furious anger and great wrath. I will bring them back to this place and let them live in safety. They will be my people and I will be their God. I will give them singleness of heart and action so that they will always fear me, that all will then go well for them and for their children after them. I will make them everlasting an everlasting covenant with them. I will never stop doing good to them, and I will inspire them to fear me so that they will never turn away from me. I will rejoice in doing them good and will assuredly plant them in this land with all my heart and soul. This is what the Lord says, as I have brought all this great calamity on this people, so that I will give them all the prosperity I have promised them. Once more, fields will be, will be bought in this land of which you say it is a desolate waste without people or animals, for it has been given into the hands of the Babylonians. Fields will be bought for silver, and deeds will be signed, sealed, and witnessed in the territory of Benjamin, in the villages around Jerusalem in the towns of Judah, in the towns of the hill country, of the western foothills and of the Negev, because I will restore their fortunes, declares the Lord. Amen. Uh, reading this passage, it kind of gives you this um, thought of what is God doing? You know, because in a way, as you read it, like he's talking about all the difficulty and the calamity that he will put upon the Israelites. And um, you think, man, God, that's harsh. You know, and he says, why? He says, because I want you to fear me. I want you to uh, stay close to me. And I want you to make sure that you're, that you're walking the way that you should walk because I am, I want to bless you. Um, but at the same time, as you read it, you kind of think, God, that's, that's rough. Um, I think about what he's saying. And I think it's because um, I have this mindset that people are still decent. You know, I have the mindset that people are still generally, uh, we try to do the right thing or whatever it may be. But, um, you know, I think... At that starting point, it kind of leads you to say, well, that's that's not that's weird for God to be treating the Israelites that way. But it's because God knows our hearts and the sinfulness of it and how far um, and how terrible the repercussions of our sins could be. And God is saving us from those terrible things by putting fear into our hearts and putting a desire to be faithful to God because God has this promise that he gives to the people. Like, I want to be your God and you're going to be my people and I want to bless you and I want to do what is right for you. Um, and these Israelites, and that probably describes all of us as well we don't go we don't quite get it and our hearts are far from god and we don't grasp the mercy of god and um 
Some of us, we just need to learn the hard way. And, you know, we realize because what it says in Romans, um, the wrath that comes, that's a wrath of our own doing. And we need to remember that, right? The wrath of God is to just simply say, fine, have your way, right? It's not um, God pouring wrath upon us in his fury and anger, but it's God allowing the repercussions of our actions to actually come to pass and for us to pay the price of what our sins are. Um, and that's the, that's the terrible thing of it. And that's ultimately what God is saving us from. The cost of our own actions, the cost of our own sinful desires, the cost of our strain. That's what he's saving us from. And it may be difficult for us to go through it. But in the end, we will say, thank God. He brought that calamity upon my life so that I would turn from my wicked ways. And that's what God is revealing to me today. Let's pray. Lord, it's difficult to hear of the wrath that you are allowing upon your people. It's difficult to hear it. And we it causes us to question you. It causes us, O oh Lord God, to admit that we don't get what you're doing. But as we meditate on this word, as we continue to just think on it, I pray, O oh Lord God, that it would lead us to a heart of thanksgiving as well. That we would thank you and give glory to you for the hard times, the difficult times. Because you, we do believe that you are for us. You, Everything that you've done, everything that you do is for us. So we thank you, God. We love you. We want to live in response to your word, God, in faith. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, well, thank you, everyone. Have a great day today.